the color contrast module. It only has two sliders. Count them. Two. So it shouldn't be too hard to work out, right? Let's find out. Hi, and welcome to episode 51 of Understanding Darktable. Like I said, there are only two sliders in the color contrast module, so it should be a fairly simple beast to work out. Now, back when I did the episode on white balance, I shot an image specifically for... And here's the bit I can't remember. I don't know if I included it in the YouTube version of the white balance video or if I did it only for Patreon subscribers who get extra content. I think it might have been in the Patreon only video. So for the rest of you, you this might be the first time you've seen this image. So here's the backstory. I took Max, my son, downstairs to outside of our garage where I've got a tungsten floodlight mounted on the wall. And as you can see from this image, that is lighting up the right side of his face or camera left as we're looking at the image. And then off to camera right, I put a just a naked speed light up on a stand and fired that at the left side of his face or camera right as we view the image. So I got two very different white balances in this image and that was deliberate like I said I shot this for the white balance episode as I was sitting down this evening to start thinking about what I was going to do for this color contrast module episode I thought ah this image would be perfect for this so hence why I'm revisiting it okay so the color contrast module appears in the color group and what I'm going to do is turn this module on but not actually do anything with it just yet. And the reason for that is because if we look at these two sliders, they are green versus magenta and blue versus yellow. Now, if you've been watching this video series for a while or if you've used any image editing app, whether it's Darktable or Photoshop or anything else, that has the ability to work in the lab color space, you would recognize that green versus magenta is the A channel of the lab color space, and blue versus yellow is the B channel of the lab color space. So it stands to reason that anything else that uses lab color space should behave in a similar fashion. And so this is why I've turned this module on, because I want to come over to the tone group and turn on the tone curve and now I can just go over to my active modules tab and I can access both of those modules side by side rather than having to keep jumping backwards and forwards. So the first thing I'm going to do with this image is introduce a little bit of an exposure boost because obviously I shot it underexposed and I think there was a reason for that at the time but I can't remember it. Anyway, what we've got, like I said, a very tungsten rich light source on camera left and a pretty much daylight white balance speed light on camera right and you know obviously in the real world you would try never to shoot under mixed lighting conditions like this if you could avoid it unless you were going for a very you know specific and potentially creative look you know you might then do it but by and large, you would try and avoid this sort of thing if you could. Okay, so this is what we've got. You know, we, we went out on a shoot, we had no control or we didn't have the tools required to, you know, fix it at the time of shooting. How are we going to deal with this? Well, my natural inclination is to think, well, this side of his face is looking very yellow. So in theory, we should just be able to drag this slider towards blue and balance out the white balance on that side of his face. So let's give it a go. And straight away, that has removed a lot of that yellow color cast from his skin. And that's great. 
At the same time, we've introduced a little bit more blue on the other side of his face, which we didn't necessarily want to do, but it's still done a pretty good job. If I wanted to limit you know, this module just to the area that was problematic, we could go draw and mask and draw a very quick path through here, down through the middle of his face, and voila, we can have a look at the mask. That's what we're covering. And so now we've done a pretty good job of removing that yellow color cast from his skin. We can just turn that module off and all the yellow comes back. Turn it back on and it's fixed. Now, it's still not perfect, obviously, because we've still got quite a discrepancy between, you know, this cool light on camera right and this much warmer light on camera left. When I now look at those two light sources, I start to think maybe this is a little magenta heavy now. So maybe we could go back to the color cast module and drag away from magenta. So to the left again, so that we come towards green. Let's give it a go. And that has reduced some of the magenta and it's still not balanced with the speed light on camera right, but it's better than it was. I do feel a little like I'm making him look a little pale. So maybe I would uh, ease up on that green magenta slider. I think that's probably a better skin tone. But what I'm interested in is the idea that these two sliders in the color contrast module are based on the same colors that exist on the A and the B channel in the lab color space. So if I was to turn this module off and to go to the tone curve and set the tone curve into the lab color space, could I achieve the same results? Let's give it a go. So we'll turn this module off and our yellow comes back. We go to our tone curve. By default, the color space is RGB linked channels, which is the fourth of four options. If we drop that down, we'll see that the second one is the one we want, lab independent channels. This gives us our lightness channel, our A channel, which is green and magenta, and our B channel, which is blue and yellow. Now, with the tone curve module, we get a little bit more flexibility because we can decide whether or not we want all tones in the image to be affected or if we only want to affect certain tones. Now, when I look at this image, what I'm seeing is that most of the problem area are light tones. They're light in luminosity. So what I could do is leave this node, which is defaulted to the center of the graph, right where it is, and only affect the top end of the graph because they are the pixels of lighter luminosity. All of the shadow stuff is down here on the bottom left-hand side of the graph, and all the brighter pixels are in the top right-hand corner of the graph. So I could simply grab this top node and drag it down towards the blue. And look, straight away, it is doing exactly what we saw happen with the blue-yellow slider in the color contrast module. If I was to then try the same thing on the green magenta axis, like we did with the color contrast module, again, I would leave this center node where it is because I just want to affect the brightest pixels only. And I would bring this down towards green as well. And look at that. Pretty much the same sort of result as what we got with the color contrast module. Let's just do an AB comparison. We'll turn this off and then I'll turn on the color contrast module as quickly as I can. 
Not bad. But the color contrast module was so much easier to dial in, right? It was just a quick click, drip, drag, done. So the other thing to ask yourself is, did I need to do the same sort of masking in the tone curve as I did in the color contrast module? Well, theoretically, yes. So let's go draw and mask and we'll do our very quick and dirty path again. Go up through here, close that off and have a look at our mask. Yep, it's pretty much where we wanted it. And there we go. So a very similar result from the tone curve in lab mode, but a lot more messing around to get it there. Whereas the color contrast module, we were able to get it there with just two quick clicks and a subtle drag to the left. And that is pretty much all there is to say about the color contrast module. Like I said, there's only two sliders. There's nothing else to do with it. So how often you're going to actually need this tool? I don't know. And like everything Darktable, there's probably 15 other modules that you could use which would get you <laughs> the same result. But I just like the simplicity. I think it's, you know, it's, it's a very cool tool for exactly this kind of image fix. And, and let's face it, we all have images that are like this at some point or to some degree, maybe not as extreme as this. But every now and again, you'll come across something and you just go, just that part of the image, the color is all wrong. And something like this might just be the simple fix that you need. All right, I'm going to leave it at that and I will see you in the next one.